Hey guys, Stefan here. In this video, we're going to look at how to record vocals in Reason 10. From setting up your audio interface and levels to recording and comping. And if you don't know what comping is yet, don't worry, by the end of this video, you will. So the first thing we want to do is head to preferences and audio. Here we need to select the audio device that our microphone is plugged into. Mine is plugged into my Focusrite Scarlett 2i2. Here we can decide on the sample rate of our session, which in turn will set the sample rate of our recordings. 41 and 48 kilohertz are the most commonly used. In short, the higher the sample rate, the better the quality. However, I stick with 41 as it's less taxing on the computer's CPU. Maybe try 48 kilohertz, if you can hear a difference and prefer it, and your computer says it's okay and doesn't struggle with it, by all means use 48 kilohertz. The buffer size I usually keep between 256 and 512. This is the allotted time for your computer to process the incoming audio from your audio interface, and will directly affect the time it takes for the incoming audio to be heard back through headphones or speakers. This time is called latency. So a rule of thumb to remember, a lower buffer size equals lower latency, but more strain on your computer, which can result in pops and clicks in your recorded audio and or playback. Whilst a higher buffer size equals a higher latency, I like to start with 512 and then lower the buffer size if needs be. Once our audio device is set up, we're ready to create a track. Simply right click and select create audio track or press command T on a Mac or Control T on Windows. Once created, we need to select our audio input. This will be your audio interface plus whatever channel your microphone is plugged into. I'm plugged into my Focusrite as mentioned before, and I'm plugged into input channel two. Also notice that we have mono selected as we're only using one input. Stereo requires two inputs. If you're using a condenser microphone, then you will want to ensure that phantom power is turned on on your interface. This is often indicated by the markings 48 volts. The next step is to set your levels. And at this point, if you're recording vocals in the same room as you are monitoring, it's important to turn down or turn off your monitor speakers and put on some headphones instead. Otherwise, you can create a feedback loop where the sound from the microphone is coming out of the speakers and then going right back into the microphone and so on and so forth. This can create a very uncomfortable sound. In our sequencer, we want to make sure enable monitoring for track is turned on. And by this point, we should be getting a level indicated here and also hearing ourselves or the talent. Now to set the recording levels, you will want to leave the level on the track inside of Reason at 0 dB. And we want to do all of the level adjustments for the recording on the audio interface itself. If we were in a real life studio, we will leave the fader at 0 on the desk and we will just be adjusting the gain on the desk to bring up the vocal level. And that's the same thing we're doing here, essentially we're leaving the fader at 0 and then we're using the gain knob on our audio interface to bring up that level. I like to get my vocalist to sing the song, maybe a verse or two, and as they are singing, I'll adjust the gain knob on the audio interface. But how do we know what level to set it at? Well, I like to set my levels so at the talent's loudest, they're no louder than minus 13 dB. Or in other words, they are peaking at minus 13 dB. Now, an easy way to see this level is to head up to the hardware interface and turn on the big meter. Here we can make quite a few adjustments to the meter, but what we have here is fine for what we need to do. Along the top is our VU meter, and along the bottom is our peak meter. Have the vocalist perform and pay attention to the peak meter. You'll see exactly at which level the talent's voice is peaking, and you want to have it hitting around minus 13, minus 12 dB. Here, some people like to go a little louder, 
experiment and see what works for you and what you like. Either way, it's a great tool to help you achieve consistent levels between songs. Once our recording levels are set, we need to make sure that the talent can hear themselves properly against the rest of the music and potentially make some adjustments there. If you're working with a stereo bounce down of the instrumental, obviously there's a lot less you can do balancing wise. If you have all the stems in the track, then you can do a lot more. You can even potentially do a separate headphone mix for them, but we're not going to cover that in this video. But if you're interested in how to create different headphone mixes, um, let me know down in the comment section below and I can do a video on that. And finally, it's a good idea to turn on pre-count so that the talent knows when to come in. If they find, however, that the default one bar count is too short, we can then head to options and then pre-count bars and change it. Now we are ready to record. Record enabled should be on by default. If it's not, make sure it is and then hit record or command return on a Mac and control return on Windows. You may also want to rename the track. The recording will begin from wherever your playhead is and we can hit shift return or the space bar to stop the recording. This is the end. Hold your breath and count to 10. Feel the earth move and then. Hear my heart burst again. Extremely simple. But what's not simple is getting the perfect take first time. To help us achieve the perfect take, we can make use of Reason's comping feature. This is the end. Hold your breath and count to ten. This feature allows us to record over the same part multiple times until we've gotten it right or just plain give up. However, using Reason's comp editor, we're able to review each take plus mix and match takes to stitch our perfect take together, or the closest thing to perfect. Reason has a bunch of tools to further refine vocals and we'll look into the comp editor plus these other tools in videos to come. But for now, be sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on alerts to be notified. If you found this video useful, please give it a thumbs up. This will increase its visibility on YouTube and give others visible access to this information. If you have any questions, be sure to drop a comment down in the comment section below and I'll get back to you. Thanks for watching. I've been Stefan and as always, happy beat making.